Hello everyone. Today we will learn about some basic knowledge about the business laws. We will focus mainly upon the Information Technology Act 2000 and the Indian Contract Act. There are some multiple choice questions through which we will understand the concept of both the laws. So let's begin. The first question is, what is a bill of exchange? Options are, option A, a conditional promise to pay, B, an unconditional order to pay, C, an unconditional promise to pay, or D, an unconditional order to pay. The correct answer is option B, that is, an unconditional order to pay. The next question is, when the IT Act 2000 came into force, options are, option A, 17th October 2000, option B, 17th October 2001, option C, 11 November 2000, or option D, 11 November 2001. The correct answer to this question is, option A, that is, 17th October 2000. Let's now have some basic knowledge about what is Information Technologies Act. The ID Act 2000 is known as Information Technology Act 2000, which is the primary law in India which deals with the cyber crimes and electronic commerce. The bill for this act was passed in the budget session of 2000 and was signed by the president K. R. Narayan on 9th May 2000. The bill was finalized by a group of officials headed by the then Ministry of Information Technology, Mr. Pramod Mahajan. This act contains in total of 94 sections which are divided into 13 chapters and 4 schedules. The law applies to the whole of India. This act covers crimes which involve a computer or a network located in India. Person of other nationality can also be indicated, indicted under this law. So let's move on to the next question. How many schedules are there in the Information Technology Act 2000? Options are Three schedules, option B, four schedules, option C, six schedules, and option D, two schedules. The correct answer to this question is option B, that is four schedules. Let's move on to the next question. Which act is, which is the act which provides legal framework for e-commerce in India? Options are. IT Act 2000, Option B Indian Penal Code, Option C IT Act 2000, or Option D none of the above. The correct answer to this question is Option C that is IT Act 2000. Let's move on to the next question. Which section of the IT Act deals with the legal recognition of electronic records? Options are a. Section 2 B. Section 5 C. Section 6 and D. Section 4 The correct answer to this question is Option D. That is Section 4. Let's now focus on Section 4. Section 4 deals with laws that provides that the information or any other matter shall be in written or in type typewritten or printed form then notwithstanding anything contained in such law such requirement shall be deemed to have been satisfied as such information or matter is rendered or made available in the electronic form and is accessible so as to be usable for a subsequent reference this act means that the laws in which the information is given 
by some electronic form and which can be accessible for a subsequent reference shall come into force and shall come into the ambit of IT Act 2000. Let's move on to the next question. This section of IT Act deals with the appointment of controller or certifying authorities. Options are A. Section 17 B. Section 15 C. Section 10 and D. Section 5 The correct answer to this question is Option A that is Section 17 Now let's talk about what does Section 17 gives us. As per this section, the central government may by notification in the official gazette, appoint a controller of certifying authorities for a purpose of this act and may also by the same or subsequent notification appoint such number of deputy controller, assistant controller and other officers and employees as it deems fit. The controller shall then discharge his function under this act subject to the general controller and the direction of the central government. The deputy controller and assistant controller shall perform the functions assigned to them by the controller under the general superintendence and control of the controller. The qualification, experience and the term and condition of service of the controller, deputy controller, assistant controller and other officer and employees shall be such as may be prescribed by the central government. The head office and the branch office of the office of the controller shall be such places as the central government may specify and these may be established as such places as the central government may think fit. There shall be a seal of the office of the controller. So basically section 17 talks about who is a controller, how is it, how is it appointed, what are his duties, terms and how much a controller is important. Let's move on to the next question. Which section of the IIT Act 2000 deals with the punishment of cheating by impersonation by using of the computer resources? Options are Section 66D, Section 66A, Section 66B and Section 66F. The correct answer to this question is option A, that is section 66D. The next question is, what is the punishment for hacking of computers? The options are option A, death sentence, B, life imprisonment, C, 3 year imprisonment of 5 lakh rupees penalty or both, and D. 3 years imprisonment or 2 lakh rupees penalty or both? The correct answer to this question is option C that is 3 years imprisonment or 5 lakh rupees penalty or both. The next question is which section of the IT Act deals with child pornography? Option A is section 67F B, Section 67D, C, Section 67C, and D, Section 67B. The, op the correct answer to this question is option D, that is Section 67B. Now let's discuss what Section 67B talks about. It says, whoever publishes or transmits or causes to be published or transmitted material in any electronic form which depicts children engaged in sexually explicit act or conduct or creates text or digital images, collects, seeks, browses, downloads, advertises, promotes, exchange or distributes material in any electronic form depicting children in obscene or indecent or sexually explicit manner or cross C cultivates entices or induces children to online relationship with one or more children for an unsexually explicit act or in a manner that may offend a reasonable adult for a computer resource. Clause D facilitates abusing children online or Clause E 
records in any electronic form own abuse or that of others pertaining to sexually explicit acts within children shall be punished on first conviction with the imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to five years and with fine which may extend to 10 lakh rupees and the event of the second or the subsequent conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years and also with fine which may extend to 10 lakh rupees provided that the provision of the section 67 section 67a and this section does not extend to any book pamphlet paper writing drawing painting representation or figure in electronic form the publication of which is proved to be justified as being for a public good on a ground that such book pamphlet paper writing drawing painting representation of figure as in the interest of science literature art or learning or other objects of a general concern or which is kept or used for a bona fide heritage or religious purpose so basically this section talks about what is child pornography and how an offender is punished and what is the degree or the time period of punishment let's move on to the next question which section of the IT Act 2000 proposes a punishment of life imprisonment? Options are Section 66F, Section 66C, Section 66B, or Section 66A. The correct answer to this question is Section 66F. The next question is What is the maximum penalty for damage to computer? computer system, unauthorized access, download of data, infecting with virus, denial of access, access and etc. as per section 43. Options are A. Rupees 50 lakh B. Rupees 1 crore C. Rupees 5 crore or D. Rupees 75 lakhs The correct answer to this question is answer B. That is Rupees 1 crore. Which of the following strikes only at the document and not transaction? Options are the Transfer of Property Act 1882, B. The Registration Act 1908, Option C. Both A and B, and Option D. None of these. The correct answer to this question is the Registration Act 1908. Let's not talk about the Indian Contract Act. The Indian Contract Act 1872 is divided into how many chapters? Option A, 3. Option B, 8 chapters. Option C, 10 chapters. And option D, 12 chapters. The correct answer to this question is option C. That is, the Indian Contract Act is divided into 10 chapters. The next question is the law of contract is nothing but options are a a child of commercial dealing b a child of religion c a child of day-to-day -day politics and d a child of economics the correct answer is option a that is a child of commercial dealing the contract act came into force in which year? Options are from 1st September 1872 but with a retrospective effect B. Before 1st September 1872 C. From 1st September 1872 or D. After once 1st September 1872 The correct answer is option C. That is from 1st September 1872 The next question is The Indian Mercantile Law is based upon which culture? The options are A. Indian culture B. British culture C. England law or D. American law The correct answer to this question is Option C. That is England law The next question is 
The agreement consists of reciprocal promises between at least options are A. Four parties B. Six parties <laughs> C. Three parties uh, and D. Time. Two parties. Uh. The correct answer to this question is What's option D. Two parties. The next question is In India, the express provision of the Contract Act applies to A. Hindus B. Mohandan C. Businessmen or D. All of the above. The correct answer to this question is option D. That is, the Contract Act applies to all of the above. That is Hindu, Mohammedan, businessman and every individual. The next question is Who said contract is an agreement creating and defining the obligation between the parties? The options are A. Peter Drucker B. Salman C. Austin or D. Drucker. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is Salmond. Let's move on to the next question. An agreement is defined in section dash of the Indian Contract Act 1872. The options are Section 2C, Option B, Section 2E, Option C, Section 2G, and Option D, Section 2I. The correct answer to this question is Option B, that is, agreement is defined in Section 2E. So now let's see what does Section 2E says. The Section 2E defines agreement in form that every promise and every set of promises forming the consideration for each other is an agreement. This means that every promise that two parties does with each other to come in a contract and in which some consideration is involved is an agreement. Basically an agreement is a promise between two parties to perform an act in, cons in consideration to each other and in which some form of consideration exists. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question. A finder of lost good is called A. Bailer B. Bailey C. True owner or D. Thief the correct answer is option B, that is, a finder of the lost goods is called Bailey.